As Samsung's CEO for many years, he turned the South Korean family company into a tech giant. And he even made it to the richest man in the country. Lee Kan-hee, who died in October 2020 at the age of 78, was one of Asia's top tech moguls. How did he turn Samsung into the world's leading smartphone manufacturer? And why was he also known to be controversial? The force behind Samsung's empire, now on Tech Titans. I don't ever give up. And, and I was human. I am human. You're going to see the future. Internet. Some internet. Tech Titans. Lee Kan-hee was born on January the 9th, 1942, in Daegu, today the fourth biggest city in South Korea. Actually, we have to start four years earlier. On March the 1st, 1938, his father Lee Byung-chul opened a tiny dry goods store in Daegu. He did it with only $25 and he named it Samsung Trading Company, the forerunner for the Samsung Group. By the way, Samsung means three stars, which explains the initial corporate logo. There's not much known about Lee's early life. We know that he got a degree in economics from Waseda University in Japan and that he started a master's degree in business in Washington DC without finishing it. Then in 1966, at 24 years old, Lee joined the Samsung Group. Back then, the company was known outside of South Korea, but only for making cheap televisions. After the death of his father in 1987, Lee took over at Samsung Group and appointed himself as chairman. Lee believed that Samsung was too focused on producing large quantities of low-quality goods, so he famously said, change everything except your wife and kids. Lee wanted to drive innovation at the company and catch up with rivals like Sony. In a declaration now known as the Frankfurt Declaration, he had his executives gather in the German city in 1993 to call for a change in the company's approach to quality, even if it meant lower sales. Samsung says that Lee's declaration was the motivating driver of the company's vision to deliver the best technology to help advance global society. And did they succeed? Well, why don't you ask Sony? Samsung overtook the Japanese company in 2006 as the largest manufacturer of televisions. Today, Samsung Electronics, the heart of the company, holds the leading position in the smartphone market with its Galaxy models. In 2020, SE alone accounted for 20% of the market capital of South Korea's main stock market. Samsung is also the largest manufacturer of electronic memory chips and supplies competitors such as Apple. Ford estimated Lee's fortune at 14.7 billion euros as of January 2017. Until his death, he was the richest man in South Korea. When he died on October the 25th in 2020, the cause of death wasn't publicly disclosed. But Lee had been incapacitated for many years after suffering a heart attack in 2014, causing him to withdraw from public life. You knew some of this already? Well, have a look at the following three facts that you probably didn't know yet. Lee's public appearances were rare and he didn't give many interviews. He only seldom left his private compound in Central Seoul to visit the company's headquarters. That's how he earned the nickname Hermit King. Lee was an amateur wrestler in his younger years, but he was also a big sports promoter. At one point he was president of the Korean Amateur Wrestling Association and a member of the International Olympic Committee. And in 2009, he even secured South Korea's host application for the Olympic Winter Games of 2018. He did it by simply making Samsung one of the top partners of the International Olympic Committee. Lee Kan-hee was the richest man in South Korea and currently his son and successor at Samsung Lee Jae-jung and his daughter Lee Boo-jin are among the 10 richest persons in South Korea. Lee Boo-jin is CEO of Hotel Schiller, one of Seoul's leading hotels and conference centers. Lee Kan-hee's death came at a time when Samsung Group was under immense scrutiny. His son, who is the de facto leader of the Samsung Group, has been embroiled in legal troubles since 2016. Lee has had problems with the law since the 90s. In 1996, he was found guilty of bribing former President Ro Tae Woo through a slush fund, but was pardoned a year later. 
In 2008, he was found guilty of tax evasion and embezzlement, and even stepped down as head of Samsung. But again, he was pardoned a year later. Officially because of his role in South Korea's Olympia application, it was later revealed that his pardon came in exchange for bribes. Lee made his comeback at Samsung in 2010 and, as you know, continued for four more years until his heart attack. What do you think of Lee Kan Hee's story? And which tech titan would you like to know about in our next episode? Let us know in the comments and give this video a thumbs up. Oh, and subscribe to our channel for more.